Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. I got the microphone in the way of all things I'm doing. Today we're going to do a firmware update on the Radiodity DB25. After we get the firmware update done, we're going to configure APRS, and then we're going to go out and we're going to test to see if this antenna works and if APRS works. I'm going to take another antenna with me just in case this one doesn't work. So be sure you are subscribed to the channel for that because, you know, progress. We got to do firmware, then we got to do APRS, then we got to program some repeaters, then we got to get out in the desert and make some contacts. That was a whole lot of stuff. Let's get this firmware updated. I'm at radioodity.com and I want to hover over the support menu. It's going to pop down a list of all the different radio brands that they have. And this is the Radioodity DB25. I'm going to guess that it's going to be under Radioodity. And then if you scroll down the page to the mobile series, you'll find all of the different mobile radios that they have. And we are looking for the DB25D. Go ahead and click on that. And in order to do a firmware update, we're going to need to download the firmware. So I want to download this 2024-0620 firmware. And then there's a bunch of gobbledygook. This is actually the internal code of the firmware. So we need to know that. Click on that, save it in some useful location that you know where it is. I'm going to stick it in my downloads folder here. Then I've got a whole bunch of files inside of this download folder because I am playing with a bunch of other stuff while I'm at it. But what we need to do is take this file and extract it. It is a zip file and it's best to extract these things and work with the files inside than it is to work with them inside of the zip file. It's a weird thing that Windows does and some programs work and some programs don't. But for ham radio, just assume that most of them don't work and you want to do the extract step. We right click on the file in question and there is this extract all choice. We choose extract all and then you can just hit the extract button because it's going to put it in a folder inside of the current folder. Now we're extracted. And you can tell that there's, you might not be able to see it on the video, but if you look really closely on your computer, this has a, a manila file folder with a zipper on it that is closed. You want to look for the one that has that same name but doesn't have that zipper or you can check the file type here and this says file folder and this one says compressed zip folder we want the one that is a file folder so there's a couple of different ways to tell that you got the right one when you are in here there is a setup program so let's go and run the setup program and this is a windows thing the firmware developers did not pay the extortion fee to microsoft to get this thing signed so microsoft defender smart screen prevented an unrecognized app one that didn't pay us the extortion fee. And it's going to say, don't run as your default choice. If you pick this more info link here, it will give you the fact that it is an unknown publisher, which is true. And then you can choose run anyway at the bottom. Then it's gonna ask the thing all over again, the thing that it just asked you. And since we wanna do this, we say yes. And then it's a typical Windows install program. Next, next, next finish and it's unceremoniously finished and what do we do now this is where it gets a little interesting it left a program on your desktop called i'm hiding it hold on let me move let me move out of the way here it left a program on your desktop called iap and that is the name of the program so double click on that now we get to plug in the radio and turn on the radio in order to get this thing connected to your computer properly you want to use the cable that came with the radio it's got a k connector on one side and a big usb port on the other side and this is big because it has a serial to USB converter built into it. On the side of your radio, there is a K connector hiding behind a little cover that you unscrew. Once you get that unscrewed, plug that cable in, and then this one here goes into an available USB port on your computer. And we don't just plug it in and turn it on any way, shape, or form. There's a special thing you gotta do. You have to hit the P1 key on the radio's top side and then hit the power key. And when the radio comes on, it's gonna come on in a weird way. It's gonna have just the white screen and the red transmit light's gonna be on. It's not actually transmitting, it's just a light letting you know what's going on. So now in our IAP program, we can hit seek com and it will find the radio in question. This is if you have your COM port and your drivers set up properly for the included programming cable. If you don't, I will link an article in the description for you on how to get that all set up. And it's from our friends over at Adafruit because Windows device drivers aren't all that easy. But now we've got that all set up. We've done SeekCom, it picked up COM4. In my case, it's the only serial port to choose from. So I choose it and then I hit open. And then that moves it down here. It doesn't actually open anything. It just moves it down here as the one that we're going to use. All the rest of this stuff here you want to ignore and then you want to choose open app file at the bottom. And it's going to feel like you didn't click it because it takes some time because for some reason this program runs really slow. 
From there, we want to go back to that same folder where we downloaded the firmware and we ran the installer program. And this program really is painfully slow. And then there's only one file to choose from, so it's really hard to get this wrong, right? So I'm going to pick the db25-d file that looks like what we downloaded, and this is pretty close. The date is going to be a little bit different than what was on the Radioudity's website. I think it said June something, and this says May something. It's fine. Now it shows up down here, and again, everything else, we just leave it the way it is, and we hit the IAP button this time. Just click it once. It's really slow. It's going to feel like you didn't do it. And then it's going to turn gray. Now it says erase OK because it has erased the firmware that's on the radio. And you'll see it counting up the current page showing a checksum and it has to get up to 412. So we just kind of sit back and relax and wait. All right, there we go. And it's going to say IAP checksum right on the screen. And I believe the radio just turns off. Yes, the radio just turns off. Let's go take a look and see it come back on to verify that we did everything correctly. All right, your guess is as good as mine. We're going to hit the on button. And she works great. Awesome. Let's do menu and then device info, and then version. And now you can see the version that we have here. And that name, 909E DBB EARSAB, should very closely match the file name of the download. And now that we're all finished with the firmware update, we can just go ahead and exit out of this program. There's an X up here in the corner. And we're done. This is actually a relatively simple, relatively straightforward firmware update. There's only a couple of gotchas. One is that the program runs really slow and the other one is possibly getting those COM port drivers installed. So if it doesn't show up when you hit the seek COM button and then look at that link in the description down below and that will take care of it for you. If you don't have this radio and you are interested in it, there is also a link in the description down below where you can find a discount code to get this radio with $15 savings. Make sure you're subscribed to see the upcoming videos about this radio where we get it working on APRS and we take it out in the field and test it with some different antennas. In the meantime, there's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.